The third and final problem of the week is this example of a dam. Consider a horizontal strip of dam at a water depth of 50 meters. If it has a radius of curvature of 200 meters and spans 150 meters, how much force F is there on each end of the dam? The diagram below is a view of the dam from above and just note that it is not to scale. And to give a better visualization, I'm drawing a sort of 3D view of the dam to show how the water pressure is acting on it and to show the 50 meter depth where the horizontal strip is located. Since we're only analyzing a small strip of the dam and it's also located at a great depth below the surface, we can neglect the pressure gradient along the strip. If you recall from our hydrostatic loads lesson, lesson 2.9.6 in week 4, hydrostatic pressure increases linearly with depth, and so the equation for hydrostatic pressure is given by P equals gamma H with units of kilopascals. Gamma is the weight density of water, which is 9.81 kilonewtons per meter cube, and h is the depth in meters. In the problem, we're told that the strip is at a depth of 50 meters, so applying these values to our equation, we will get a pressure of 490 kilopascals. And recall that force is equal to the area times pressure, so for a 1 meter high strip of the dam, we'll get 1 meter times the full span of the dam, which is 150 meters, times the pressure that we just found of 490 kilopascals. And this gives us a total force of 73,500 kilonewtons or 73.5 meganewtons. That's an insanely large force and it'll be acting at the center as a point load. So here we're flattening this pressure out into a box because if you think about how water pressure acts, it's essentially just acting vertically like this. We know that there are also horizontal forces acting on the dam, but really we only need to calculate the forces in a single direction to get the value of F. Just to clarify, when a force is acting on an angle, we can break it up into its component forces, and for forces acting in the vertical direction, this component force will be Fy equals F times sine theta. Using a bit of angle properties, we can figure out that theta is 22 degrees. So we have our angle, and we'll soon know the component force, Fy, and with these values, we can easily solve for the force, F. Again, since we only need one component force, I'll draw the y components for these two forces acting on the ends of the dam. I'm just quickly adding in our sign conventions to remind us of our positive directions. Calculating the sum of forces in the vertical direction, we get the sum of Fy equals 0 equals 2 times F times sine of 22 degrees because there are two of these forces and they're identical, minus our point load, so 73.5 meganewtons. Rearranging this equation, we can isolate and solve for the force F, which comes to 98 meganewtons. That's nearly 435 million pounds just to give you an idea of how much force these dams are really retaining. To answer the question, how much force F is there on each end of the dam, we found that F is equal to 98 meganewtons. As a recap, we were able to find this value by taking only the vertical forces into consideration because once again, Fy equals F times sine theta. And since we found that the angle was 22 degrees and were able to solve for Fy, all we had to do was then rearrange and isolate for F.